Hello, I'm Eileen McHugh with the BBC News. Tunisia's main opposition coalition has called on President Kai Syed to stand down after less than 9% of the electorate voted in a poll for a new assembly. The leader of the National Salvation Front, Najib Shabi, called the vote a fiasco. Charles Havland reports. It's exactly 12 years since a Tunisian street vendor, Mohamed Bouazizi, burnt himself to death in an act of protest that triggered the Arab Spring. From that wave of change, only Tunisia emerged as a democracy. But the current opposition accused President Sayed of moving towards one-man rule. He suspended Parliament in 2021, taking many of its powers for himself and promising to turn around the economy. That hasn't happened. And with this new assembly having few powers, most Tunisians didn't bother voting. One accused Mr Sayed of dragging us towards the abyss. The award-winning Iranian film actress Tarani Alidusti has been arrested after she publicly condemned the first execution of a protester in Iran. The semi-official Tasneem News Agency said Ms Alidusti was detained for publishing what it called false and distorted content and inciting chaos. Here's Sebastian Usher. Tarane Aladusti caused a big stir a few weeks ago when she posted a photo of herself without a hijab and holding up the slogan of the protest movement, Woman, Life, Freedom. She was taking a big risk as she lives and works in Iran. More recently, she condemned the first execution connected to the current wave of demonstrations. Now she's been arrested. She's by no means the only celebrity inside Iran to have spoken out. Other prominent figures in cinema, sport, art and literature have made their support for the protest known, but she is one of the most high profile to have been arrested. The South African state energy supplier, ESCOM, has confirmed that the military has been deployed to some of its power stations. The country faces the worst electricity blackouts, as Nom Samaseko reports. Soldiers have been deployed at the Majuba, Camden, Khrotfle and Tutuga coal-fired power stations in the Mpumalanga province. This after Eskom and the country's special investigative unit said theft and acts of sabotage were being carried out by criminal syndicates operating within the power utility. In recent months, police arrested several employees for theft of coal and diesel, while another admitted to damaging equipment. Eskom has implemented power cuts for nearly 200 days since the beginning of the year as it tries to balance demand and supply, which has been hampered by aging plants. Negotiators at the UN's Biodiversity Conference in Canada say they're confident of securing a deal to save the natural world from destruction. Targets under discussion include reducing environmentally destructive farming subsidies, requiring businesses to assess their biodiversity impacts and tackling the scourge of invasive species. World News from the BBC. President Zelensky of Ukraine has said power has been restored for almost 6 million people in the last 24 hours, following intensive Russian attacks against the country's electricity generating system. Speaking in a video address, Mr Zelensky said repair work was continuing without a break after a ninth wave of strikes on Friday. However, he said there were still major issues with the water supply and heating. Mr Zelensky said the worst affected areas were Kiev, Vinitsia and Lviv. The Californian mountain lion, who achieved celebrity after living in the Hollywood Hills for more than 10 years, has been euthanised. Officials in Los Angeles said the ageing big cat, known as P22, had been suffering from severe health problems and appeared to have been hit by a car. Thousands of Israelis have rallied in the main city, Tel Aviv, to protest against an incoming right-wing coalition government that they say would sanitise corruption and undermine the country's secular nature. One organiser said a raft of new legislation proposed by the coalition would fundamentally change what he called the DNA of Israel, turning it from a secular country to a messianic fundamentalist one dominated by religious restrictions. The American film director Steven Spielberg has told the BBC he truly regrets the decimation of sharks that followed the success of his movie Jaws. He was on the programme Desert Island Discs and was asked how he'd feel about having real sharks circling the island. That's one of the things I still fear, not to get eaten by a shark, but that sharks are somehow mad at me for the feeding frenzy of crazy sport fishermen that happened after 1975, which I truly and to this day regret the decimation of the shark population because of the book and the film. I really, truly regret that. A report last year warned that a third of shark and ray species were at risk of extinction because of overfishing. BBC News.